Meeting to order. Tonight's meeting of the Conservation Commission is being recorded for RCTV. It's live, Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. You can view it. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob. Check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. And uh, did every did you folks um, sign in the sign-in sheet in the corner? Is that on the way out? It, yeah, you just do it now. Thank you. So, the first item on the agenda is, I have to find the agenda. Uh, 11 Gregory. Yep. Notice of Intent 270-0693, 11 Gregory Lane, Map 51, Lot 99, McCurrian. The Commission saw this plan a couple of weeks ago and didn't like the idea that we had a three to four foot high retaining wall within the 35 foot node structure. So we simply redesigned the plan to go with a two to one slope, starting at the 25 foot and avoided construction of the structure. There have been no other changes, but you can see how the color plan back. The wetland is a detention pond in green. Uh, we've got in yellow the 25 foot no disturbed, and the 35 foot in that orange color, the buffer zone out here in yellow and the erosion control is shown in orange wrapping around the site. Uh, we're proposing it will be three to four feet of fill at the highest point and less than the remainder of the site, just leveling out a portion, portion of the yard. We'd have a two to one slope and we'll landscape the two to one slope. I suggested round juniper, uh, but obviously I have the option of something else if they want, but that's low maintenance, low height, it looks good. Any comments? Chuck, comments? Um, do we do three to one or is it two to one? It's two to one? Three to okay. one. Three to one? It's three to one, so we're at a two to one slope. Oh, we're at a two to one slope that's been stamped by an engineer. I was say, it's, it that's, can be yeah. two to one if it's stamped. It if it's by that. an engineer, it can be a two to one can be maintained without too much difficulty. You can't mow it, but as long as you put the, low maintenance plants uh, on it. So that's why you, you recommended something like the low the, growing juniper low, or, yeah. some, or something. Blue rug juniper or something along yep. that line. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, it's not a long slope, it's only going up four feet. So if we're like a 20 foot long slope, I'd be a little more concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, removing? the trees that are in the slope because we asked about tree boxes or on yeah. the slope side. So any tree that's in that slope area will be removed. Yes. There are actually that uh, is there, trees. One? there are some trees over on this side and there's a large tree right in this area. In fact we discussed that a little bit the last time I was here. And Chuck had mentioned putting a box around I have a short excerpt from the Arborist Manual. Was, uh, most people are surprised to learn 90% of the fine roots that absorb water and minerals in the upper few inches of soil. Roots require space, air, and water. Roots grow best when these requirements are met, which is usually very near the soil surface. Piling soil over the root system or increasing the grade smothers the root and only takes a few inches of added soil to kill a sensitive mature tree. Even if the grade change is not in the immediate vicinity of the root zone, the water table, the drainage patch could be affected, which can adversely impact, impact the trees. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is, my general, uh, my rule of thumb is if you're putting over six inches of fill over the roots of the trees, those trees are going to die. It may take, may take years, but they are going to die. And I've, I've done it myself. 
So Steve, is it, just, is, it, is it just, I see the large tree right in the middle of the, the grading, right at the, the prow of the yep. area. The area, the, the trees, and I think they were like double rooted, double trunk trees yes. over to the left. Are those being removed? Uh, we'd like to remove, but we don't have to remove them because they're in the no disturb area. So, Why would you remove them? Because I think they're going to die eventually. I think it'll take it'll take five, six years. W why? Because are you changing because the soil on top of the roots? Oh, I see what you're saying. Because you have to read. I'm sorry, I'm the homeowner there. And your name is Kelly McCarrion. <clears throat> and my my husband is the one that's been involved in most of the paperwork for this. We have three little kids at home that I just called him to see if maybe my mom could help with bedtime so he could pop in here because he's been involved, I think, with you more so. Yes. I think those trees are what you're trying to explain. They're on the lower part of the yes, yard. Yes, they are. Right. So if we do raise it the way that you're asking, then it would be a lot of soil that would have to go up that tree, right? It won't go up the tree. <coughs> we're not going to we're not gonna bury the trunk of the tree, okay. but we are going to be burying the roots of the trees. Right, okay. In the time, that is going to kill the trees. Uh, it's pretty much inevitable. And the trees will they can last for years. I've so how many how many are there, Steve? I, I see there fourteen are like three inch double trunk trees, if I remember correctly, in that area. I think it's two. I think two. it's one double trunk and one single. Okay. Do you know what the species are? They're red maples. Okay. Oh, all right. Red maples. We got a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We don't take as cavalier an attitude about them um, as they are a wetland species. Um, and we do have a tree policy. Um, so if you remove them, we would be asking for replacement. What's the total count? And how do we count the clump of red maple? You know, if the if how have, we, a, how have we in the past? I don't think it's come up. They've taken out one, and we've considered it one. People have taken off one and left two, um, to my knowledge, of, of how this has happened. I am not following you. Take so a clump of three yeah, yeah. tree trunks over six inches, I remember a request where one was coming out, but not the other two. And we mm -hmm. treated it as one-to-one -one replacement for that one. Oh, so what you're intimating is that maybe if it was three trunks, it would be three. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that's how we did it once. I don't think we have a standard yet, and it's up to the commission to, uh, you know, kind of wade through this gray area. Do you know the, the diameter of these? I don't offhand. My memory I'm, would be about six or eight inches. It looks like it's, is it not called out in the drawing? Is that now with this 14 inch, 14 inch, 14 inch, 12 inch, 12 well, inch, 12 inch? Be no, because th th there's, there's some further down the slope. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're saying. planting a few trees to replace them, mm -hmm. but an alternative would be if we cut the trees and we leave the roots, uh, since they're red maple, they're going to sprout up from there, and the remaining roots will be a smaller root system. So. Well, the smaller tree isn't dependent on that massive root system that's probably there right now. And the smaller tree will likely grow and sprout quickly. So I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, are we just talking about trees that are within the buffer zone? Or we, excuse me, within the 35 foot? I'm not sure what, which yeah. trees we're talking about. The trees that we're concerned about are in the, the right it, it, Between the 35 and the 25. In this tree. Oh, okay. So Okay. Actually, he's got them as 12 and 14 inch trees. I didn't actually measure them, so I'll take his word for it. He's the engineer, I'm sure there. And how many how many shrubs would that juniper bank that you're talking about represent? We use it depends on how many they want to put in the snout with, but we'd normally call for them to be about five feet apart. <laughs> And they, they would fill in the rest of it by themselves. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could just pluck them, you know, two feet apart. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that goes into the math too in terms of replacements, right? Hmm. 
count those as replacement trees or shrubs. Is that three to one shrubs for trees? I can't remember what we wrote. Two to one. Two to one. We probably Three haven't covered when they're under a certain size. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like three foot and under. Three foot and above. So are we in agreement that the, the uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, the juniper that you're recommending, is that a native species? Yes. Okay. Do you know roughly how many um, you need to fill in with this well, area? The information that that you've provided, do we have that in writing? You know, lots of times we ask for a planting plan, but um, do we have anything on this plan that says how much you would be putting in? in we just call for it to be landscape, but if you want to put a condition that that many plants be put in. Yeah, I this think it's an RDA, right? This is a notice of intent. Notice of intent. Yeah. I mean, we can include that. Yeah. That's not much different than when somebody comes in and negotiate what what they want to replace and what they're going to take out. Sure. And when do you expect to do this work? I'm sorry? When do you expect to do this work? Oh, So, all right, so... Is the uh, season okay for this, or are we getting a little late in the season? Actually, our uh, growing season is supposed to be till October 15th. Right, but right. Obviously, we can go a little further. Anymore, even though Trump doesn't seem to believe it. Uh, but it's warming up now, and the plants, those plants are going to be in uh, gallon sized pots. So if we, they're either going to sit at the nursery for the winter in the gallon sized pots, or they're going to sit in the ground on site gallon size, you know, in the ground. So I see nothing wrong with planting them right now. If it was dead or winter, I would, I would say no. It's going to get 40% on the top of the house. I don't see that right now. Well, they pop out in the, yeah. in the freezing uh, ground, yeah. Um, does anybody have an issue with this? Um, no, just as long as we have some you know, safeguards in place if those trees don't survive the planting. You know, um, what about, what about, um, as, besides those plantings, is there going to be any other, um, anything else planted to establish some sort of cover on that slope? If we did, that, that was what I recommended. We didn't discuss that. Okay, well, let's, detail, let's discuss it. But it, it's a nice looking plant, it stays low. People aren't going to walk on it because it's a nice looking plant. What, which plant is that? The, I'm sorry? The, the juniper. The juniper. Uh, I'm talking yeah. about ground cover, though. Would there be something in between there? Uh, I'm talking about. Eventually, within a few years, they'll take over the whole area and just take occasional weeding once in a while. You, you've probably seen the plant at banks use it a lot. It's completely low maintenance. Uh, put the things on the ground, they spread out, and they give a fairly dense cover. This is the juniper you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not familiar with that, but I can look I it up. Yeah, I have them in my yard. The junipers tend to kill everything around them. It tries to grow underneath, so it's a pretty uniform, low-maintenance kind of plant. And do they self-spread out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. To beat them back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I want this ten feet long. It was, uh, something sort of like it's sort of it's almost like a ground brush. Yeah. No, it's, oh, I see. Oh. You recognize it once you see it. The 
does it. Then. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I see. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's a nice looking plant. Okay. Good thing is nobody wants the. Right, because it's, it's got. Nice looking plant. But it's also if it also has some fine needles on it too, yeah, so you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to walk on that. Yeah, it's a nice copper. Okay, so are we allowing the um, trees on the left to be cut? I'm fine with that. The trees in the, uh, in the left. zone of natural vegetation are those the ones you're talking about? Well, there's one large one. But yeah. that's where they are, right? Yeah, they are. I'm just making sure everyone knows. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you. And we're going to do this with just 15 junipers for All the replacement of, of 15. those trees. And there's no room in the yard for anything else. There's not much, if I can speak. Okay. What we're doing this for is so that our children can have a playground. We have three kids that are five and under. We're expecting our four. So it would, it would be lovely if we could have a playground for them. But we're happy to do whatever it is that you yeah. need us to do. Um, but that's the reason on why we're, but we love our backyard. We love the privacy. We love the wooded area. It's just, it's so sloped that we just cannot put a playground now without fixing it. Okay. And those junipers are, are they going to be pretty hard, needly? Yes. Is that what you want for the slope? Are you going to want the kids to go uh, down into that lower slope. area? No. The slope is simply a replacement of the retaining wall. So right. originally it was going to be a wall, but now we can't But it's going to cut off the lawn because none of the kids are going to want to walk through that Correct. area. So, so if you have the slope grass and then you put some other plant closer to the wetland, you, then you could have all that area to okay. use. Is there a list of plants we're allowed to use back close to the woodland, I guess? Because that's what the 25 foot buffer is up, right? That, that's entering. It is. So. You'd have to pick native plants. You might pick shrubs instead of Fine. some ground cover. Sure. Um, but I, I just think if you're trying to increase your yard, you're really creating something that's going to prevent people from going into it. It may not work in the future. You're almost creating a cutoff yeah. in that area. And so then you could, you could have that slope to slide down or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. big wheel, yeah, whatever the toys kind of are these days. In, <laughs> yeah, that slope kind of ends up in a pretty deep, uh, like, swampy area, so that's not really anywhere to go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Some places are simply just an elevation point instead yeah. of a wall. Yeah. It's just just from there, and you're in the detention pond. Yeah, yeah. Much. so it's not like there's any room to go in there, but um, I'm happy to consider any other plants that are... So we can, we can just say 15 acceptable shrubs from our list that's on our website. Yeah, yeah. if we have a list, that would, that's fine. Well, we, yeah. probably, we probably should just say follow the tree policy. Yeah. yeah. And so, because I'm not sure we have a count of the trees, and maybe some of them aren't six-inch caliber. And, um, but maybe you guys could do that and present something in writing to us, well, how are you going to do the replacement and decide whether you're going to do the juniper on the slope or do some shrubs further back? Yeah, well, I could talk about it and decide just, yeah, just didn't even get a chance to put it as a condition. You know, sometimes they may prefer something else just because I like the juniper doesn't mean anybody else does, right? Yeah. I think sometimes you, you get this, you get the work done, and you, you see what oh, this is now this is where we want to plant something. And mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, I think as long as we've got the condition in there that you know. Get us something in writing of this is what you want to do once okay. that slope is in place. Can we pick those plants next season once the work is done so we see what it looks like yeah. physically? You could, um, in my opinion, you could pick them within the next three years because the, the, the uh, order of conditions will be open for that. But then you'd have to, whenever they're planted, you'd have to uh, establish that they're still alive for two years. And that's um, that would be uh, probably a site visit from myself. Yeah. So you don't want to go too, I guess. You know, officially it's open. I don't think you want to go too long, or else it could no, really right. start to drag for you. And yeah, this uh, is going to be more for the next opening of exactly. next season, anyway. Yeah. So. Right. I mean, we were thinking of anything. We would maybe start the, the filling in the fall if we could even find contract plants yeah, available we'll have, at this point. Yep. Um, I was thinking of more of the springtime. Like our babies due in March, so it would be great if we could have it for the summertime. Yeah. It will be hard to find a contractor right now. Everybody's busy. Yeah. Um, I just I just want some clarification on the amount of tree cutting you are doing on the left. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
and the tree that's is marked to be cut is the center. Right, I, I see that, but Steve was talking about things on yeah, the side. You have to cut the other trees. It's just that, in my opinion, they're going to be damaged. Yeah, you thought they were going to die. I guess my only other fear, too, is like the branches and stuff like that with it being a playground and the kids, is, you know, safety wise for them. Yeah, there's a lot of loose <laughs> branches on it. You, you can you trim. Uh, you could trim. Yeah, you can do all that stuff. I think, I mean, you know, if you guys aren't too concerned, I mean, you, you're certainly not replacing equivalent habitat by cutting down two 14-inch trees and putting a bunch of juniper on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it'd be better if you left the trees from a habitat standpoint or maybe trim them so you get a little bit more sunlight back there but don't take them down. Mm -hmm. um, and that would also help with their survivability. But my experience with burying the roots is as long as you don't bury more than half, you're probably okay just from seeing what my neighbors have done. I think it's when you put a ring around a tree and then you put three feet of dirt over that. That's when you get into I think that was the plan for the trees on the left. There's, yeah, there's two large, like, bunch of trees, like with three trunks together, and they're pretty dense, and they don't, they were not really in the area that was going to be level. It's the mm -hmm. center tree that we needed to get. Like that. Does that happen? You yeah, see that? I was going to say, our neighbors have got quite the... Yeah. <laughs> well, when that go in Chuck? <laughs> That's a huge thing wall there. Yeah, they have quite the wall. <laughs> Not to be pretty good. Well, I was there before. We yeah. Stopped, so been I don't there. know. It's been there for a while, I think. Sports court. You thought Steve was having flashbacks to uh, Andover, weren't you? <laughs> I guess we saw that. We didn't think it was going to be like as big of an issue, just leveling it slightly. But I guess it's. I don't know if we can see any of these trees from here. This looks like there's. Uh, mm, you have houses along beside you, the basketball. Right. Yeah. 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 It's highlighted in yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all the kids. So I think that this is a our our same small sample currently have and I think right here is the one tree that we were saying definitely needed to go. Yeah. Oh I see. And then I think the other ones are like yeah. over this yeah. way. Yeah. The ones on the side really I don't think they're in the way. If we can trim them that's what we need to do. Yeah, but honey I do think that they are within the yellow line the way that it's here. I think they are. I think they're like Yeah but isn't that your property line? Yeah. No they're with I mean it is that property line but you're better off, I mean, my person, they're better off, if they want them, if they think they may want them, you're better off just figuring it, it now. out now. Do it now. It done. Yeah. Yeah. We just need so, the plan. Yeah. We need the plan. We need to know what's going to get planted, where, you know, when. So that when we come back to give final sign-off on the certificate of compliance for this notice of intent, yeah. We've we've got a we've got a plan. So. You can make that as a condition before any work begins. We'll have it, the final planting plan. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I can't tell you when we're going to try to fill it out. See it for the season growth. Right now, it's going to look great. Well, then you don't want it before any work begins. You kind of want it before this. Before at what time would we ask? They want to see. This um, this project develop and then decide on the plants. So how would we handle? I that? would say present a plan and then if you have to change it, come back with an equivalent. I mean, you kind of. I mean, we've we've changed drastic difference yeah. differences in plan, but it but at least you know us having something gives us a starting. So what place. do we need to decide as far as the plan? You know, I guess I guess maybe I should have said that in a different way because what I'm thinking is you don't necessarily want to do the grading, create that slope, and then not put anything in it for a year. Or no, wait, you know, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to have a rainy spring right. and have that hill wash, wash oh, out. Right so we're we'll going to have to do that. So but, right. but considering that a season, we can't really plant anything that's going to grow right now. Well, you could, you could put something in the ground now, I think, uh, if you, if you rush, but other, otherwise, if you do it in the spring, you're okay. Or we could just wait for our whole project to begin in the spring, right. I suppose. Yeah. That's probably the best idea. But if, 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 you don't, if you don't establish some sort of plant along that slope, we are going to ask for some erosion control on it to probably stabilize the slope steps. in the meantime. So kind of like a blanket. Well, can, you tell, can you give us as far as like how many plants and which category to plant? Or can you just 
It's really our job to say yes to what you guys present we, to we us. We don't want to micromanage your planting ideas. We will say, you know, natives. We'd, we'd like to see natives. And we have a list. Okay. And we've got a variety of It's on the website as well. I guess I'm most interested in how many trees are coming down. So you could just email how many of the trees are coming down and then what plants you're going to plant and then what numbers you think you're going to plant. And then you could say something like, you can decide in the field where they're going. Yeah, it sounds fine. I, I think that's that's exactly yeah. what Chuck says. That way we've got something to find of this is how many are coming down and this is how many are going back. It meets our policy. Yeah, because then I would be able to check to see if it meets the policy. It checks we my know box, how many trees are coming. And then we're, we're all set. So, so sticking with this plan, then if it was this, our current plan includes just that one tree that is coming down. That's the right. one that we have marked. And if that's what you decide, then that's then fine. Just, if there's more, um, then uh, add it, and then you'll have to compensate with, with additional planting. Some additional planting. Mm -hmm. So. All right, well, I just wanted to have that conditional approval this way, like a schedule of the work, so that we can discuss this too. Yep. With you and so. Right. So all so. we need to do is figure out if that tree or an additional tree is coming down, and then what we're planting in its place. Right. Yeah. And, and when you do that. Trees on, on the, uh, I don't have the right plan up there, on one side, on the east, the west side, that we're going to be covered by um, Phil? I kind of concur with what Harry was saying. You know, if, if less than 50% of the root radius, root diameter is, is covered with soil, it's usually... I've got these trees right here where we're coming down. So those... Oh, those. Yes, yeah, so and then we were talking about these ones here. So that's, but they're outside of our allowable fill zone anyways, right? They're within the 25 foot, right? Is that the 25 foot that I'm seeing there? Yeah. Well, I, we didn't have intentions of cutting those down, but, yeah. you know. So it's really just these here because the fill's going around it. Yes. And, and then, then this one right. here. Mm -hmm. and so, so that's a clump of three. three. So a total plus. of three? Yeah, that's it. And you think there's... I, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. One double and a single tree. So there's three over here and one over there. So it's four trees. I think I if, if, if you count the double two. as a two, then probably that can be in the email. Whatever it okay. is. Yeah. Um, and then, so if it was shrubs, if they're over three foot high, you could do two to one for shrubs. Uh, if they're under three foot, it'd have to be three to one for shrubs. And it's okay. one to one for trees. Uh, over three foot, you said. Over three foot, the tree is going to be a little bit bigger. Three is going to be three inch caliper, twelve to fifteen foot tall. Well, and where do the trees then need to be put? Does it have to be put then in our yard? We just ask that they go anywhere in the buffer zone. I think Steve would be a big help to figure out where they could, how close they could be to the wetland. So anywhere in the hundred foot buffer. Yeah. And there's two hundred foot buffer zones, or at least two wetland areas on this plan. So we have all this area. On the other side of the And it'd be too. great to have them within the, the, the 25, I mean, the 35 to 45, between the, where we're filling and the resource area. Well, you're going to be putting, I, th I think you want to put some shrubs or something yeah. in that sloped area. And if those are, are native, you know, that, that it counts towards our, our tree policy. Rather than trying to figure out where you want to put some trees. Yeah, there's plenty of trees there. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, yeah, we're not touching those trees off outside. Hmm. All right. Um, this is an N01. It this is a notice. notice of intent, that's correct. So I uh, would only ask that you close and I'll uh, okay. write it up between now and the next meeting and get the information from Steve okay. and uh, we can issue it then. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to close 11 Gregory Lane. I don't have the number in front of me. 270-0693. 270-0693. Oh, what she said. Well, Do second. I, all those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you okay if we get back to the kids? No, go no ahead. that's fine. Go ahead. The rest of this is going to be riveting, so you no, might want to yeah, stay. Everybody stay. else is doing too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one.
Uh, Ray, did you second that? Yes, I did. The 710 RDA for Grove Street, um, they've asked to continue. I actually haven't heard from them. Oh. So, but we can continue Wait a minute. again. Wait, well, it's 732. Um, I would assume that we would just continue. Uh, Make and a motion then. to continue. Second. All those in favor? All there? Okay. Um, next on the agenda is a stick certificate of compliance for Temple Street Parker School, Boston Gas, the rear of 45 Temple Street. Um, Chuck sent some information out. And um, there were some photos, and basically it's... <laughs> Looks fine. <laughs> yeah, it's grassed in. I don't, I don't see anything uh, strange or... Yeah, motion to issue certificate of compliance. The original order was uh, in 1995. Yeah. So it's had a lot of time to uh, so grow why, in. So why is it coming to us now? Because uh, the gas company wants all their orders of conditions closed out throughout the state, and they've given most of that work to, huh. uh, who are we dealing with, uh, BHC? BHB. BHB. Right. BHB. Finesse so they are they are attacking the ones that don't need, like, a detention basin or, yeah. uh, you know, some sort of wetland creation yeah. first. That's this was one of them. Just go around and... Well, did you see, did you see the what they submitted? They actually did go around. They submitted some, they figured out where it was. They submitted uh, these pictures. This was a lot better than that. Did this come in? I, I saw email that. email that to people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see, see that. That was VHB. That was Conoco? Oh, that's, that's the name of the gas company. It is. So, um, yeah, that's I recommend VHB. that. Uh, Conoco Engineers? Unless they bought a VHB. No, I would make a VHB motion VHB to the major. I recommend that we sign this order, uh, this <laughs> certificate of compliance, 2700272. And, and someone has to make a motion. I made a motion already to issue the certificate of compliance. I yeah. second it. All those in favor? Okay. Next is um, so I can I can tell you a little bit about the next one while you guys are signing that. Uh, so next on the agenda is uh, 154 Green Street. Um, the commission's been out there a few times. We did have a list uh, that we um, cobbled together at the last meeting of to dos, and at this point. Uh, the slope that was probably one to one and a half has been knocked down to something closer than to one to three to one and it's been hydro seeded uh, the rest of what we asked for which was uh, there are two dead trees located close to the house the developer says that that's not his responsibility and he's not going to be taking those down so they're off um, there was some relief valve mm -hmm. downspouts. Can you explain that a little bit more? What do you mean they're not his responsibility? Both of those properties are purchased, and he is not going to take them down. If the owners that live there want to take them down, they one's dead, before. they can do it. The yes. other one is alive, and they can contact the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. I, it's not in the order to take them down. They are damaged, but we also don't have a bylaw against damaged trees. So unless you want to make, yeah, yeah yeah unless it's really okay. something that you feel strongly about um, I think that the homeowners will will handle this okay um, yeah, strongly about that oh, Our new the mummy. Yeah, the mummy. yeah yeah it was quite a meeting <laughs> <laughs> so we put the mummy to sleep <laughs> wow. oh, what no, put it on the, uh... anybody getting chills so that one of the next next things was that the downspouts, um, all the downspouts go into uh, infiltration chambers, right. and we asked about a relief uh, 
overflow overflow valve on the downspout and those weren't there they're not there but that's one of the items he'll have in by Tuesday and then there were leave and yard waste some yard waste I agree um, he doesn't want to get because he believes it's in the neighbor's yard but Is it, what's are, those direct, the are those the branches the, the branches that are in back of the right. fence that's installed he doesn't want to touch those but the ones that are directly behind where, where it's woods or wetland he'll he'll remove those and, and he'll remove the loose uh, leaves and he will talk to his landscaper about the sod being placed on top of stones and whatnot. All that work will be done by Tuesday. And he's not here tonight. Uh, and he said he was going to come here, but his wife had a baby. I don't know if it was Monday night or Tuesday night. But he's been busy for the <laughs> during this, the last two weeks. And uh, he asked that um, for these things uh, that um, he will get them done by Tuesday if you sign the uh, Certificate of Compliance and I would issue it on Tuesday after I inspect the property and I would say that some maybe there is a commissioner there Dave Bennett's been helpful uh, Nika and um, uh, uh, what, what's your name? Rebecca <laughs> Rebecca yeah what's your name <laughs> has been helpful on it's these site helpful. visits but uh, we'd give Thank one you. last one last look to make sure it's in compliance and then it, and then I would just sign off and, and issue that to them um, is that is that that's all? His, that's is that, his offer. Was that everything? The, the leaf was the fence done. Oh, what about uh, what about the neighbors? Um, yeah, the engineering. So I sent an email to the engineering department, and uh, although it's not in their purview of things to look at, uh, they did run down there and, and take a look because they had to do something down the street. And Chris Cole told me that uh, he does not consider that an issue whatsoever I thought it, it was the uh, if you're looking at the two houses it was it the neighbor to the right it's the neighbor to the right yeah I thought that there was a kind of a swale going down there is a swale there's an easement it's not really a swale though right well it, it's a, it's it's a, a cup shaped the, area yeah. that you know would you know it would like a culvert or it's like an open swale that would bring the water into the well from the street right. so it's on an angle and it, it's it's definitely um, active I guess because you can see some runoff in there down by the end yeah um, and this is actually par like parallel to the culvert yeah yeah it's and you can see the whole thing it's it's uh, just beyond the erosion control fence so the neighbor thought that maybe they they brought up the slope it was more than he expected and he was worried right. about water coming over into his lawn and uh, Chris said that, that he didn't think that was possible. Did we talk to the neighbor afterwards? No. About it? No. Um, I, I think I responded to you. My only concern would be this neighbor is also in an uh, certificate, in, in, in order of, under an order of conditions? It right? is, yeah, he is. Um, if we don't hold one person to the standard of what they said they were going to do, and they have issue with that. I mean, it leaves them room to kind of not do what something they they said to do. I, I think that would be my only concern. Well, what was this? So they graded. I have this actually prepared. Yeah. They um, graded uh, to a different elevation and extent. Oh, that was it. So here's the. Here's a site plan that we got if the neighbors on the application. If the neighbor doesn't have an issue with it at, after hearing from engineering, then I don't really have an issue with it. I guess that's, that would be my only thing. And here is here's what we, uh, we permitted. So this is the approved plan. So I can switch back, but we can. You can see it's kind of meeting. Yeah, house. 194, kind of 195. You know, dropping down, but a lot more gradual. Um, and on this one here, it's has a larger area that's flat, and then it 
it's not as gradual. Um, so which one was in the approved? The, the one, one that was this one. The colored one. Yeah, that's what I remember. And that's what he did? No. No. He, no. he flattened did this. It. He flattened, flattened the majority of it and then pushed the slope down. out towards the property line. And this is the old as-built. There's a new as-built based on what's out there actually now. Out there. And yeah. they did a much better job of actually identifying the slope. Yeah. Does it look remarkably different along the property boundary? So it looks like it says 195 right there. <laughs> yeah. They, and it was 9, 194 at this point. 197 is here. The whole thing's pretty much 197. And then 195 and so on. 197. This line was extended out to about here. So this three foot higher than we expected in that area. And is that the right. is that the covered easement? Just that it's a double black line just yeah. beyond it. And the swale is to the in left it, of it. Oh, it's right up, right over it. it. In between those double black lines. Also, oh, swales right over the culvert. The culvert. That's there, a drainage there, easement. Those two black lines. Yeah. And the the, the culvert is. Where's the flag that's gone crazy? The see this 101, it's right yeah. about there. Yeah, so it's about the same place. Okay. So there's, there's actually a culvert that comes out right here. Yep. And then the swale kind of empties out right in this area here next to it. Okay. So you and, can, and all the runoff from the house goes into the Caltex anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it would just be the... It's just whatever falls on the grass there. So it would, yeah, it would just be the sheet flow that comes off the right. lawn, which is likely to be quite slow moving. The, yeah. That's that's more, you know, that's more or less street. The street's going to take this. But there is several more feet of fill here. Won't that drainage swale also get a little inundated during some real intense rainstorms? Well, yeah, but yeah, others do but, it too. Right, I, right. That's why you have it. Right. I'm just thinking of spring rain during a frozen ground condition. Yeah. 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 I mean, which is how which is how that would have been functioning it, anyway. It was going to work that way either way, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's just unfortunate that the slope got modified so drastically that now it's kind of right at the property line. Do you think that's really going to change the water load in the culvert, though? When the amount of water that falls on the grass that's going to run off is going to be the same? I, think, I, I, I actually yeah. think the proposed is going to keep what's on the, what's on the ground <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the yard yeah. won't go into the swale or culvert. It, yeah. It'll, it's yeah. not it'll seep the, in or it'll go yeah. out to yeah. the street. It's flat, it's, it's I mean, flat. but it's not it actually. I was going to say, it may also be less. But. Yeah, uh, it, I, I mean, the only, the only issue is that it's... Uh, it's three feet more of fill, and you know that's. I think that's that's our only issue. I mean, does that really become a big deal? I don't think I have a problem with this. Well, the fill's not problematic. You're just saying it's not the plan. I think the pill it, fill is the reason why I brought it up. The the engineering department said the the runoff from groundwater. And rain is not a problem, so I'm I'm letting them answer that question. So I'm not concerned about that anymore. So Chuck, the only other question I have then is, is the Caltech at the same elevation as it was planned. The Caltech's at the same elevation. Because if I remember correctly, that was very close to the groundwater. Well, we don't have any information on where that ended up. I mean, it would actually be better if it was a little higher, right? From my recollection, it was. Yeah, we give them trying to put a skinny low. one in, like an 18 inch, so that they could fit it below the soil. But I think that actually works better. And, and that was like the whole reason that that one conduit came out. They weren't going to fill. But yeah. They needed enough to get that Coltec buried because right. it needed to be right. so shallow. Yeah. Because they had no room from the groundwater. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Joe Guy Fedor. Kind of kills last name. 
Uh, Joe, I brought him up to speed on your Panera. request. Yes. Okay, so they already know that going in. Uh, we're just discussing um, the fill that's on lot A and the swale and what's happening there. So you that's can, you not you're saying? No. Um, uh, oh, this is the original. Wait. This is what was proposed and what right. we approved. And this is the as built that we got. So it's a little different. And I, I think the right. question. And here's the new one that we, uh, we just conducted. Yeah. The, the question was the Caltech unit that went in there, the infiltration system. Sure. Were you able to bring it up uh, higher so there was more separation between groundwater? Or did you have it at the same elevation that was proposed in the plan? that was approved by the Conservation Commission? Whatever was approved by the Conservation Commission, it was certainly it was by a professional that engineer, yeah, and, and it was at the elevation. So there's just more dirt on top of it, That's but it's in the right. same spot. Okay. 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 And then updated. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have an issue with it. Um, we have the updated uh, surveying plans. Uh, we did a three to one slope. Uh, here. discussed last time that uh, we'll recognize after uh, the approved plan. 
uh, I wanted to do for the board, but unfortunately, if a crane needed to come in, it would have destroyed everything, elevation, and it just, it, it just would have cost a fortune. Just, you know, it was after the fact. I would have loved to have done it if I could do it, you know, with a ladder, rope, and chainsaw. I want you to stop bringing cranes in. I mean, you're talking about, you know, elevating the whole site all over again. Um, so that's uh, one thing that was not completed. Second thing that was not completed is the, uh, oh, the, the down spots here. Um, these are backwater. This is what's currently there. Yeah. This one needs to be installed. Joe, I have, a, I have on the screen over here, yeah. this is from the approved plan, yep. surcharge pipe. So that's what we were looking for. Sure. So, and you can you put those in those or what, what? On, ev on every downspout you need to put one in. Yep. And you can have okay. that in by Tuesday, right? Is, is that's, that, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. Where, okay. Yeah, but you just said they were back ordered. Oh, no, they, well. From, back ordered just from doesn't mean it's weeks. Meeting. I was trying to get it in before this meeting. That's what I was oh, saying. okay. Hmm. I apologize. Um, yeah, they, they back ordered. I should be getting them by tomorrow. Uh, they just they didn't make the meeting. But they don't, they're fairly easy to install. They don't take much time. Um, but we can get that done before Tuesday. Uh, and father can be her. Um, was, okay, and that was the second one. So the two trees, the green uh, spout. Now, there were uh, a few things discovered on uh, yesterday's uh, walkthrough. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't been by the property. I just had a baby girl, so I've been in the hospital. Congratulations. 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 Thank you so much. And, uh, you look great. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm going to stand it. Um, uh, oh, I guess uh, it, it would seem that they go by, speaking of which, it seems that debris and debris leaves mm -hmm. were blown into a restricted area. That, again, was a subcontractor. Uh, he will be reprimanded for that because he you know, he was told not to do that uh, and to pick up the leaves and he took a shortcut, which, you know, which is, uh, he would be heavily recommended for that, I think, I promise you that. I, uh, for, we, we will clean it up. We will clean up the entire, uh, all, the, all the debris of the leaves. But I'm going to go out with Chuck. He'll tell me where, what perimeter he wants cleaned and we'll take care of that. I have three guys to come in and take care of it. It's not a problem. Um, we can have that done by Tuesday as well. We can, we can get that done by cool. Tuesday as well. Um, so that was number three. Oh, yeah. Um, <sighs> my saw guy, apparently, uh, where's that saw saw in the back here? The uh, saw saw in the back. Apparently, he just threw saw on top of rock with no loom underneath it. And we check, and it's absolutely really correct. So uh, that will be replaced with. Um, Just has to be in contract soil. with the ground. It will do a lot better if it's touching the soil. Okay. Um, I'll make note of that. I think hydro seed will grow on a rock, but not. Not sod. It'll grow on just about anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty so. Amazing stuff. so that, and the only other thing was. Um, we were, I asked you about the granite bounds, which go on the 25-foot line. Yes, and that's uh, Andy from Benchmark Survey, who, who, who conducted all the surveying and engineering, uh, and back to the INRAG. Uh, he does a lot of time, work in town. Again, I trust the guy. They should be there if they're not. He says they're there. Did anyone see those? Again, they could no, they uh, were they, buried. I'm not sure. Yeah, were they, were they flush with the ground? Or? Yeah, the, the stones typically, they flush with the ground sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They would have been yeah, right on that slope. So if you, over it. I don't know. If you cut back the, the slope, monument. you would have found yeah, some of them. The, the monument. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask Andy, and again, I'll schedule a plane with, with Chuck before yeah. Tuesday to go out there and uh, see where they, where they well, are. Well, that brings up an, another item when we took a, a site inspection on Tuesday yep. and um, we saw everything that that you know you've been talking about Chuck actually went over a lot of that before you came in um, but we noticed that the slope the yep. sod kind of stops down slope of on the slope okay. is it a problem to bring the sod up Not over the you are, we can add another layer. Like it was originally when you had the, right, just, yeah. well, just get it over the crest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Flatten it. Um, 
But yeah, if you want another strip around, we can have another. Well, really like a foot and a half, really a foot and a half, two feet. Two, feet. Yeah, two yeah. feet, two foot strip all the way around if you like. To just that, get that. So that it's, that it yeah, comes so, up. Yeah, so yeah, I know it's just the time restraint. But, but we'll get you, that You've been busy, you justify <laughs> All right, so let's just go over the, the list just to make sure, because I did, you didn't, there was one thing that I wanted to make sure you, you understood, okay. which was, um, so the surcharge pipes will be in by Tuesday. The yep. cleaning of the yard waste, which I'm sure this can happen, will be by Tuesday. But there's some brush out there. There's some long sticks okay. out there, too. Those need to be, and I said, when you're... When your crew is there, just call me. I'll go down there so they don't have to come back twice, and I'll say, this is fine, or no, I want, this is the area where we're talking about. So there's no confusion. I mean, we could, I could be able yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow is going right. So I wouldn't be here on Friday. Friday. I could review. Yeah. Friday? I, I wouldn't be here on Friday, but no. I could check it on Monday. Monday? And I'd have to call you back and say that it works or it doesn't yeah. work. So, yeah. um... The two trees are the responsibility of the two owners at this point. Uh, yes, because okay. the rest of our put in an elevation. You're going to either um, find the granite bounds and identify them. Absolutely. No, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or install them, but you want to call me and tell me how many there are because we have plaques that get glued to the top of them. And I'll bring those out for you guys to, to glue. Oh, cool. All right? It says, you know, Reading protected area or something like oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah, actually look really nice. And the last thing is uh, sawed over the crest of the slope. Oh yeah, and then uh, okay, and then the sawed over. Uh, you want sawed a sawed seat on the uh, on the piece of slab. Whoa. The rock. It, it, the only thing we're talking about is that this this slope, and just to put a couple more strips of slot, sod until it goes over the crest, so okay. no erosion goes down. That side. So anything else is, is not strip. needed. You want one or two strips? I just as many as it takes to get over the top. Okay, over the top. Yeah. Over the top. Okay. okay. So I have three items. Is that correct? No. One, two, three, four. Surcharge pipe, clean yard waste, and um, oh, yeah, sticks. and sticks and brush. Mm -hmm. uh, granite bounds, and sod over the crest of the slope um, and call me as much as you need to you know to verify you're there before your teams leave and I can I can run down and see what's going on okay cool um, right. so I guess at this time what I would like to uh, ask the uh, board for would be uh, if I can possibly get a sign off um, for some of the board members that weren't here last week uh, I, I do have uh, a tenant, a two, well, the, technically one's a tenant, the other one can't move in yet uh, because of banking issues. Uh, and those, those are the two purchasers, and they do have a family uh, with children. And uh, I signed off with, you know, you know it help us tremendously. If not, then uh, I would have to you know, somehow, so I, I have somehow do some legality issues and figure it out. I have no problem signing off and and having it ratified when Chuck does his inspection on Tuesday. Right. 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 So, so Joe, you're asking. This is exactly what you talked about, and we on the phone this afternoon mm -hmm. was, you would like the commission to sign it tonight, so we don't have to assemble again to assign this. But on Tuesday, I will issue it when the work is right, complete. Tuesday, you will issue it as long as all this is taken care of. Yeah. Right. And this is when all this stuff is done to my satisfaction. Right. I, I satisfaction. think I'll bring some commissioners too. Yeah, sure. We'll issue it. Excellent. And it'll be signed already. All right. Great. Like a plan. If so, you have to vote for that. To, I make a motion. motion to issue the COC and have it, well, to sign the COC and have it ratified when Chuck does his final inspection. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you Thank you. Thank you. By the way, I mentioned I could have a baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I get ready to get back there right now. What's the baby's name? Victoria Teresa. Nice. nice. Pretty. Thank you. She looks like my dad, actually. <laughs> 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 All right, Joe. Thank you. Bye. 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 How do you know that happens? I guess it's a ball baby. They're all balls. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, I guess. No, they have. Well, true. Oh, yeah. Sure. No. So these are the guys from Lakeview and Eaton. The Joe, Joe uh, Guy. Is it Guy? Is the dad? Oh, so if, if Dave was here, we would get the whole story. But um, that three generations. they're going to do the Lakeview and Eaton job. Those are the contractors. Okay. Um, anything else under old new business? Only to uh, update you on what I know about um, the gas line on Beaver Road, which is they've been having a lot of delays because equipment hasn't shown up. Um, and they, even with the rain, they haven't gone too far. So they, they cut and they put in erosion control. And then they took it out. And they took it out. Well, there, what was in the stream to dam the stream up, they took two hay bales out of each end so it could pass through. Now, that was at 11 o'clock this morning. If they got a little bit of time to work, then they, they moved forward from there. Um, but there, it's just going slow, and it's extended this project, so now it looks like they'll be finished around Wednesday of next week. I'm not that surprised. Hmm. Yeah. Get slow going and then get rain like this. Yeah, I guess they got the wrong piece of equipment. It was way too big. They sent that back and then they got a smaller one, but the attachment was, uh, it didn't have a thumb on it, so they couldn't use it. They've had a lot of problems. Uh, yeah, that seems to be really tough. So. Um, Any large corporations like that ever made such mistakes? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> So I went out there, and they're all they're all eager to go for sure because they don't even think they're yeah. from this state. They just have to stay until it's done. Yeah. So okay. I haven't had any complaints, so they must be doing you know, fine. That's that's really it. Um. Ironically, they could have left that pipe the way it was for the next hundred years. I know you had a great. Uh, it never would have been a problem. So, well, he, you know, funny enough, they actually said, can we work on Sunday? And I would have had to get the engineering department to declare it's an emergency, and oh. there's no way that it was going to be called an emergency. <laughs> okay. Um, did you folks get an opportunity to look at the minutes? I, yep. Um. Nothing came in. The track changes on it. I you tried, you? and oh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't get. I it had track changes, and I sent it, and then I opened it up afterwards. And I was like, "Oh, there's nothing in there." Me too. Oh. I, <laughs> when I opened it up, I, I put it on my desktop. And it, so we can try to do this again. Do you, tomorrow, th do you think it's no? some kind of a, like a block from town hall? Because no. I did. No, it because it was in my email. That's that didn't, it, they were missing. You're talking about yeah. the minister. I opened up yeah. because nine thirty. Yeah. 913 corrected them. and 927. You're saying when they sent it so back to me. So 913 was oh, no, I didn't receive them with any changes. I didn't make any edits. I, I made a bunch of edits to 913 thinking that it was a certain meeting, and then I realized that I wasn't there, even though it listed me there, and it was notes from another meeting. So I think the 913 had a lot of... Um, had a lot of problems. I, I don't think 913 was the minutes from 913, I guess. Is my, I... Uh, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they're they were okay for the different meeting. <laughs> so you know what? I've got we're gonna three need of them. To, uh, there are supposed to be four of them, right? Yeah. I have September twenty eighth, July twelfth, and then. Uh oh. Uh, the nine thirteen one also said September twenty eighth at the top. Okay. But I don't think there was yeah. a meeting September twenty eighth. It said it was the twenty seventh. So I just had minor changes to the 11th of October, and I could, I mean, it's so minor, I could just, I could literally hand it to you. Um, but I didn't have comments on the rest of the minutes. Um, I had some minor changes to that one, too. So you guys are going to have to send the track changes to me. The, okay. The, some, if you have substantial changes, or at least one of you. I don't, I don't know. I can try to do my best. If you have those printed out, I can. Well, so one of the things I had in there was, 
but I didn't get your changes at all. So you didn't get my changes at all? No, not from not any. Did you get a, you didn't get I an email? There was one that you said, aren't there five people? And I changed all those. And but I, that didn't have any other comments on it. You didn't get this one? No, I got I got two from you. Oh, okay. you have two. But there were no changes. There were no changes. Oh. I think it just did. I think they just disappeared. All right, let me. See. It, it so is. you had some edits, right? Yeah. Did, and you did it in like a colored track change? Yep. See, I did the same thing, and when I saved it, it didn't save my track changes. Did you intend to zip those files? Because they came through as zipped on mine, so I couldn't read them. Oh, maybe this. Uh, so uh, I, just, uh, I just tried to open it from my phone and it didn't do anything. So it. if that were the case, we wouldn't be able, or we'd have to unzip them. But I didn't realize it was a zip file. It it didn't look as if it done. Yeah, it didn't, came out as words. So it may just yeah. be well, the way it shows up. You, whatever on whatever I just sent, whatever I just tried to open, wouldn't open in Word. Hmm. I can send them all again. Send them again. the nine nine thirteen and nine twenty seven. I I'm gonna send them all again. All right. It's too hard to figure out which ones. Yeah. Uh, but I can send them all again. We can go through this but, all. But again. look, look at nine thirteen. I'll make sure they're not in a zip file. Chuck, because I don't think that is the it's right meeting. The spooky, spooky nine thirteen yes. meeting. Okay. So Chuck, when you hit send, just go back in and check and see if they sent as zip files or regular files. Sure. And that way we'll know if it's. Well, I, just now that you've said it, I'll we'll make sure that you're getting them in Word. I, okay. I mean, I'm using them where I'm saving them Word. I'm attaching them. So, it says Word so at the it top. So it might be the iPhones that I'm you, sending. When you got yours and you opened it up, was this something that come up on the top that says Enable Editing? Yeah, but that does happen to me every time. Yeah, so I hit it, hit it and I did right. Review, Track Changes, you know, Final, and right. I could see the red coming up. But I don't know. And then, But when I saved it, it didn't work. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have noticed except... I realized that Cause he, the two he, I looked you at wrote me same. back. I don't. I didn't get track changes, and I, and I went back on my desktop. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this is yeah. So when, when we'll I just, open, I mean, we'll push it to the next is, meeting. This is what's happening when, I when we the, wait until the last minute and when, do it. When, I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just saying, you know, we're all used to doing it. When I open the meeting. You don't even have time to fix any issues. We should issues. have like a format where you can check boxes. Well, I had one. Somebody was... made a format once. <laughs> it was really, really three good. Page. <laughs> Some so, way you guys are going to I was right. When I open it up, the October up 11, a, a file comes up that's a um, notice comes up says open document text. This file is read only. To make changes, click save as to save a copy. Right. You know what? I the just Word realized document. what so, the problem might be. Oh. You might have it. Well, the problem is if you do that in just a second. I'm using, for the first time, for some of these, I'm using Anika's template to edit. And it might be getting, so I'm not starting out with my template. And I it might be. I emailed you the previous. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. I emailed you the text, and I assume you just selected, copied, and pasted that into Word. I am because I emailed you. The I minutes. sat out with my template. I call up a template from a previous know, meeting and then build off from there. Yeah. But I copy and paste yours on it right. and then address each one. Right. So you generated the Word document. Unless I kept the format that it was well, in. Unless you copy. It's, it's the just format. text from an email. Hmm. I don't see how. Oh, Sounds like it's your email? fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> no, I'm convinced. It's, it's not at all. I mean, can you just quickly I'm thinking it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so you like to make a sure. chart better than mine. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 9.13? Yeah, here. I'm going to need a lifetime wife. 9.13 is the same sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. So does this clock ever work? Yeah, yeah, it used to. Yeah, it's been working. It used to. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. I think they just painted this um, yeah. room yeah, they did. two weeks ago. Looks pretty nice. Maybe they need to wind it. Well, clocks like that don't like to be disturbed, and I'm sure that um, someone took it off the wall and put it back, and that's probably way too much for something like that. I don't know what that is. Is that a uh, Seth Thomas? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, that probably is a little particular. Yes, this is the same as... This is, is not this meeting. 
I don't think we have anything left. Torturous. Okay. Do we try that? That was one of my comments, I know. There's something in every single one. Um, you have have I had some like M&M's. Those are oh, M&M's. Not the other two. Snickers. There's something in every one. M motion to adjourn. Oh, there was Milky Way. Yep. Are we all set? I just went yes. to two this time. Unless, Is this you don't want a second? Yeah. Are you worried about there's not something else? Oh, did you make a motion to adjourn? I think you did. So we have, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we only have one meeting in November and one in December. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to know about um, changing the site visits or they're still good at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. I mean, I can't get there on Tuesday, in the middle of the work day. No, you I can't. Th I thought we were doing 8.30. No. I thought we were doing one day. Well, let's just decide. I mean, what's the, it, they were Tuesday at nine o'clock. What's the new? I thought we said eight thirty on Monday was the new time last week. Sh sure, for me, but uh, I don't think you can do yeah, eight thirty. Yeah, I won't be going. I can't. Okay. I can't. So you've I got need, a meeting. Sometimes I have meetings. Sometimes I have. Well, I always have public hours from eight to nine nine thirty, but I can get out a little bit earlier. I thought we had just I thought we had discussed and kind of agreed to do Monday at nine. Why is Tuesday not a good damage cure? Because Monday's typically bad for anybody. Monday mornings are always like cleaning up after All mornings morning. work are good for me after you know, like nine o'clock I could get out. Monday mornings great right for me. Nine. Mondays mm. I thought Tuesday Every other was bad. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> okay. I should be able to make should be able to make one of those. But I do have a, a new Monday commitment, but it's every other week. So I don't know exactly how that shakes out. We only have two more meetings. This year. This year. November. December. So it's the fifteenth, it's just middle of the month for each of those. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to find the the meeting schedule. Um, yeah, no, November 8th, December 6th. November 8th, okay. So we don't meet on the 22nd. That's what I have. Okay. So there's two in November? One, One. in November. Um. So 11, 8, and December 6th? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can't be the second Wednesday. Right. That's the first Wednesday. I know. Well, it's but it's it is. It's the date that was chosen. It's the date. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I was trying to be clever. Um. Okay. I just want to make sure I have that. Do we know of, and obviously this is a Chuck probably answer, but do we know are those two meetings, since it's one a month, going to be busy? Do we have anything big coming in? I assume you know, for to cover an entire month of activity, those are probably going to be pretty busy. I don't know. This, I don't it, believe this stuff it seems like it's been pretty quiet lately. It's been, been really quiet. Yeah. You'd think so, but every once in a while. No. I, although sometimes for large well, projects, you know, it's not a great time. Time. And it's not so much this time of year as it would be like in the winter. Last, last December and January was very busy for us. It was, was because uh, Arcadia, um, Randall Road, Randall Road, and, that, there was and, and also Walker's Brook. There was that planting mm. and. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So Randall back. Road yeah. took up a lot of time. And, and we did the third party review, so there was a lot to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but other than that. Well, we had the. Um, well, the weather hasn't helped. It has, but it hasn't. Well, we've, we've, we've um, kind of gone by our big developments Lowell Street, Main Street. Well, they just started up. Lowell's going to be starting up. Franklin would be this morning. Yeah. I mean, that could. That could start up with, I don't know, it's getting into the winter season and the holiday season. What's the date? 
What's that? Say because it's not going to be yeah. on what day. Nobody decided. Two years ago, mm -hmm. on December 12th, I dropped my son Justin off. Tuesday at, at night. On Saturday morning, he was in the baseball <laughs> clinic every Saturday in the fall. There you go, Chuck. Take it the ran lead. until December 12th. Sure. It could have run the next weekend, but the guy that runs it, Dave Gray, so, we've only got one so he just didn't want to push it that close. The ground mm -hmm. still had not frozen by December 12th. Do you see yeah. anything big coming yeah. through? And last year, they ran until after Thanksgiving. It seems like it's been pretty quiet. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I don't see anything big. Next meeting, nothing came in today for the next meeting. There's a couple of fences and things like that, small stuff. Small stuff. Um, and we'll know. We'll know. Well, I was just discussing, you know, we had our big things like Lowell Street, Main Street. Yeah. That's kind of Franklin Street. And we had uh, Lake Ave. We started working. Was it Nanrad? Nanrad, right? yeah. Right. That could be okay. something. But I, I don't see the Federas cool. ramping up for that because they're still busy in Green Street. Right. A well, Lowell Street's not starting soon, it's I wouldn't think. It's not starting soon? Well, I haven't heard of anything. Like That's a little surprising. Away. These are the gentlemen doing Lowell Street, too? No. No. Nope. No, that's a different group. Are they on the property? They don't own the property on Green Street, do they? On Green Street? These guys did. It was mm -hmm. their property. They mm -hmm. built it, and then they sold it off. So they've done, they did another one on Eaton Street. Kind of looks similar if you go up almost to the end of Eaton Street where it meets up with um, Salem. Oh. It's, it's up that end. Mm -hmm. So they did another project. And then they're going to be working on Lakeview and Eaton. So are we finished, folks? I think we are. I second Anika's earlier motion. Okay. Commission meeting is closed. Yes, I'm in favor.